Hello, and welcome to another edition of Convict Inc. I'm your host, Robert Rosso. If you have not subscribed, please do so. And if you like this video, uh, please share. Uh, it is Mob Monday. I'm actually running a little bit late today because I was in Kansas City last night at Chelsea Handler, Handler concert. Uh, also went by USP Leavenworth. I've got some video that's going to be up sooner or later about seeing Leavenworth for the first time uh, since I was sent there with the Fresh Life Sentence in 1998. Actually, I left there in 2002, uh, and I talk about that on the video. But anyway, Jimmy Ida. Who's Jimmy Ida? Jimmy Ida was uh, a captain consigliere of the Genovese crime family. Is that how you say consigliere? Uh, he was, uh, uh, we would call it put down in, in, in gang speak, <laughs> inducted into the, the mob uh, underneath uh, Matty the Horse. Uh, Jimmy worked as Matty the Horse's bodyguard. He worked as Matty the Horse's chauffeur. And then he eventually, um, Became the underboss, acting underboss, I guess, for a little while, uh, for the Genovese family. I just was researching some of his case. Um, I met Jimmy Ida in um, 2003 at USP Lewisburg. I was originally placed in F block, cell 207. And I think Jimmy, so Tommy Reynolds lived in two... Till 209, I think it was. So Jimmy was down the, halfway down the hall. Uh, maybe so, actually, probably about so 203, I believe. Anyway, I called Jimmy, I had a little man, a, a little guy or little man. Nobody in prison called him that, short guy. Uh, what I remember best about Jimmy, uh, we watched TV every day together. We both had seats in the back, back corners of the TV room. We He sat next to me, uh, actually shared a chair with uh, Frankie DiPietro, who was a smash and grab guy out of uh, New York, also good friends with Gas Pipe, but that's a whole different story. Uh, Jimmy Ida would, uh, in the morning, every morning, worked out religiously, uh, health nut, all about those weights. Um, and he's, you know, he walked the track a little bit. Uh, real quiet guy, real respectful guy. Now, uh, there are people that will know that uh, I was involved in an incident. Well, I was the catalyst, I guess you would say, of an incident between Benny Geritano and Jimmy Ida where they got into an argument. Uh, a fight, actually. Benny actually punched Jimmy. But what happened was, and I've said this before, uh, a man by the name of Pino out of New Jersey, he was a boss of the New Jersey family, uh, happened to end up in my cell, 207, when I was in the hole. Uh, Pino really didn't want to leave the cell. Uh, my old celly, Billy Bruce, had some words with Pino. Uh, Benny Geritano overheard. Uh, Benny and Jimmy Ida had words over... Uh, what was going on in my cell, and um, it escalated. Now, specifically, Pino was 70 years old, never been to prison, came in with a fresh life sentence. Uh, I had the best cell in the block, and he didn't want to leave. However, uh, Pino and Jimmy Ida were close, and me and Jimmy were really cool. And what I did was I went to Jimmy and said, look, at, you know, I, I want to have this guy moved. Jimmy Ida was working on it. Pino, Pino was dragging his heels. Jimmy was, you know, they, they were friends. They have that mob thing in common. Uh, Jimmy wasn't trying to push Pino, and that's how stuff really escalated. Now, there's a couple different versions, but maybe one day I'll get Billy, Billy, my old Sally on here, and he can, he can tell you the exact story of what happened while I was in the hole. Nevertheless, there was a morning when Benny and Pino, I mean, I'm sorry, Benny and Jimmy Ida were outside on the weight pile, they were both coming in. Jimmy Ida had some words to say for to, to Benny. He then swung a weight belt at Benny, and Benny pieced him up. Benny, Benny pieced up the old dude. Uh, now, he wasn't expecting to be hit like, like he was. Uh, another 
mob guy jumped on Benny and, and Tommy Reynolds jumped on him. Um, they all ended up in the hole and I ended up getting them all out. <laughs> anyway, but that's not what I was really going to talk about today about Jimmy Ida. You know, you always try to remember things that happen with these mob guys because people find it interesting on Mob Monday. I've said that story before. This story will be repeated again about Pino and Jimmy and Benny and uh, because there's going to be guys coming on my show that want to talk about it. Uh, that's coming. It's coming. Anyway, Jimmy Item lived with a guy for a, a period of time by the name of Carmine Russo. Uh, in the past, I made a mistake. I think I called him Jojo Russo, Joseph Russo too. It was Carmine. Carmine Russo was really close friends with uh, a guy named Chinatown. They grew up together. They were mobbed up together. Colombo family. Yeah, Colombo family. Uh, Carmine Russo they, and, and Chinatown both were talking about uh, committing a crime, and they end up getting five years for just talking about committing this crime, if my memory serves me collect, correct. But Carmine is a really polite guy, doesn't want no drama, or, or he did it in 2003 to 2007 when I was there. Some people can say he's a little goofy, uh, funny guy, uh, very passive, okay? Uh, Jimmy Ida was not the person to live with if you are passive. And I don't say that to put Carmine down. I don't know anything about Carmine today. He was nothing but respectful to me. I liked him. Jimmy Ida absolutely could not stand Carmine Russo. Made no bones about telling anybody who would listen that he couldn't stand him. Uh, the problem was, is it wasn't easy to move from cell to cell in F block. Uh, it was a it was a choice block, the low population, like eighty guys. Uh, not many guys went to the hole in that block. Um, it was a block that you didn't really want to leave. It was a comfortable block. What Jimmy Ida would do to Carmine, so he played a bunch of mental games with this guy. What he would do is he went out every morning, like I said, every morning like clockwork. He went and he worked out. When he would return. He would shut his cell door and he would put a cardboard piece of cardboard in the window. Now, typically guys put cardboard in the window when they're using the bathroom, specifically the toilet. So also that tells your celly, if you have one, don't come in here. Jimmy Ida would put that cardboard in the window from 10 o'clock, I think, when he got in. And he'd stay up till 3 o'clock. Even when he went to chow, he kept that cardboard in the window. Why? He didn't want Carmine in that cell. That piece of cardboard said, Carmine Russo, you're not welcome into this cell. And he would do that. So Carmine was only allowed in his cell in the morning when Jimmy was outside working out. And then he was not allowed to be back in there for the rest of the day. Now, uh, Carmine used to complain to me and say, like, I don't know what to do about this guy. He's torturing me. He don't understand. He kicks the bed at night. He intentionally wakes me up. So when Carmine would fall asleep, Jimmy would shake the bed or kick the bottom of the bed. This is what Carmine said. I didn't live in the cell. Uh, those are Italian guys. Not my business. Uh, they, they were in different circles than me. Uh, if they were, you know, white guys or white gang members or something, then I, maybe I'd have a little say-so. But I, I, never, I never stepped out of my place to go talk to Jimmy Ida about why he treated Carmine Russo the way he did. Uh, I wasn't really sure sometimes if I believed Carmine because to me, Jimmy Ida was this just nice older guy. Uh, Carmine, maybe I thought he was misjudging. Maybe I thought I didn't know what was really going on. But um, Carmine told me that, that Jimmy Ida would, uh, would go ahead and he would, uh, he would open up his locker and rearrange things. Now, he had a lock on his locker. <laughs> you know, I thought Carmine... So I did think Carmine was a little bit nuts at times. This is Carmine Russo. Well, when Jimmy Ida went to the hole, because Benny Gerritano pieced him up, uh, Carmine said, Robert, come here, look at this, look at this. What had happened is the, the day before... Jimmy Ida had taken syrup and honey and poured it in Carmine's locker. <laughs> now, I mean, 
this is a guy who really, really didn't want him in the cell. I mean, at that point, I think if I was Carmine, I just would have, I would have just beat him up myself or something. I don't know. I mean, that's just some straight bullshit. But sure enough, uh, he did. I helped pack Jimmy Ida's stuff uh, when they went to the hole for a few days over him and Barrett, Jen, Benny Geritano. Uh, packed him up and uh, Carmine tried everything not to have Jimmy move back in the cell. I'll never forget how happy Carmine was when J Jimmy went to the cell. He thought for sure he wasn't coming back on the compound. You know, a mob guy gets hit like that or gets in a fight, causes other mob friction. So Carmine was certain that Jimmy wasn't coming back. Well, he didn't know that I, I had it in the works to go take a couple guys and go, go to the right people and, and get them pulled out. And Carmine was sick when Jimmy Ida returned a few days later. <laughs> now, uh, I forgot when Carmine left or why, but uh, I remember the day that, that he did leave the cell finally and Jimmy Ida was just, I've never seen somebody so stupid. I hated him with all my guts. <laughs> uh, yeah. But he definitely played little psychological games. That's what I remember best about Jimmy Ida. The fight with Benny Giratano, of course, because I remember there was guys saying Benny was going to be dead because you can't hit somebody in the mob like that. And Benny was just like, hey, F you. You know, I don't care about any of that. But the thing that I remember most is, is how he just tortured Carmine Russo. And that's what I remember most about Jimmy Ida. And he was really, uh, we watched the news a lot. He was... We had a lot to say. He ha he had a mousy look about him. He was real quiet. He talked talk, talk like really low. <laughs> so you had a hard time understanding him. But uh, gentleman, gentleman indeed, to me, he was. Um, asshole to his sellies. Uh, apparently he was too. And uh, that's Mob Monday. This week I'm going to try to do a live for sure. Uh, got a couple things coming. Um, see you tomorrow. Uh, and we're going to be on the road back home here in just a second. I'm out of town.